Hello and welcome to Mr. Alvarez's online virtual chemistry class. Today we'll be learning about table F and how it relates to solubility. Right now what I need you to do is take out your reference table. You will need your periodic table of elements and table E. The very first thing you're going to do is take these formula names like calcium carbonate and turn them into chemical formulas using the crisscross or drop and swap method. We'll do the first one together. Calcium, since it's in group two, element number 20, it has a charge of positive two. Carbonate on table E, in parentheses, is a polyatomic CO3, close parentheses, two minus. I perform the crisscross drop swap method. I get Ca2, CO3, 2. But remember, ionic bonds for formula units. That is the lowest whole number ratios of cations to anions. So 2 and 2 reduces to 1 and 1. CaCO3. From there, you would look on table F to determine if it was soluble or insoluble when dissolved in water. If it is soluble, ionic bonds should conduct electricity in water as they are one of the three electrolytes, acid, bases, and salts. Ionic bonds are salts, so you would put yes. We'll pause here so that you can fill out the rest of the worksheet. Let's finish the rest of the worksheet, shall we? For the next one, potassium nitrate. Potassium element 19 is a group one element. So it has a charge of positive one. Nitrate is a polyatomic on table E, has a charge of negative one. When you perform the crisscross drop swap method, you get KNO3. For ammonium sulfate, both of these ions are polyatomic ions on table E. Ammonium is NH4, 1 plus, and sulfate is SO4, 2 minus. When you perform the crisscross method, you get NH4 in parentheses, 2 SO4, ammonium sulfate. For the fourth one, potassium, once again, is in group one, so has a charge of positive one. Chlorine is in group 17, so has a charge of negative one. When you perform the crisscross method, you get KCl. For number five, copper two chloride, remember that Roman numeral means copper is a transition, transition metal with multiple oxidation states. For this particular copper, the charge is positive two. Chlorine has a charge of negative one again. When you perform crisscross, drop swap, you get CuCl2. For number six, sodium, also in group one, element number 11, has a charge of positive one, but hydroxide, is a polyatomic ion on table E. Open parentheses, OH, charge of minus one. When you do the crisscross method, drop swap, you get NaOH. For number seven, potassium, once again, charge of positive one. Chromate on table E, it's a polyatomic. CrO4, close parentheses, with a charge of negative two. When you perform crisscross drop swap method, you get K2CrO4. And for the last one, calcium sulfate, the charge of calcium, element number 20, is positive 2. Sulfate, once again, is SO4, 2 minus. When you perform crisscross drop swap method, you get Ca2. SO42, which once again reduces to CaSO4. Now use table F 
to determine whether these eight compounds are soluble or insoluble. Let's check our work. What we'll do now is we'll dissolve each of the eight substances into the water, stir, and see if they dissolve. We will also check to see if they're gonna conduct electricity. What I have here is a conductivity tester, which is a light bulb with two copper electrodes that is plugged into the electrical outlet. As you can see, the pure water does not conduct electricity. Ionic compounds conduct electricity when dissolved in water because they dissociate into free moving ions. If it's a separation of positive and negative charges, which allows the electrical current to flow through them. The first substance is calcium carbonate. As you can see, calcium carbonate is a flaky powder. I will take the calcium carbonate from the weigh boat and pour it into the beaker. I'll take a clean scoopula and stir. As you can see, it looks like the calcium carbonate is dissolving into the water. Let's see what happens when I place the light bulb inside of the solution. The light bulb goes on, but goes on very dimly. We will talk about why this is happening later on. The second substance is potassium nitrate. Potassium nitrate looks like a bunch of little pellets. Let's try dissolving the potassium nitrate in water. Take the potassium nitrate, place it in the beaker of water, and stir with a clean scoopula. It doesn't look like it dissolved. Let's take a look at what happens when we place the light bulb on. As you can see, the light bulb goes on very brightly as compared to the calcium carbonate, which goes on very dimly, if at all. Potassium nitrate, calcium carbonate. The next substance is ammonium sulfate. There are little tiny crystals in the ammonium sulfate weigh boat. As we take the ammonium sulfate and we pour it in solution and we stir, it already looks like it is dissolving in water. And the light bulb goes on brightly once again. The next solution is potassium chloride. This is the fourth solution on the worksheet that we were working on. We take the potassium chloride, we dissolve it in the water, we stir using a clean scoopula, and we test using the conductivity tester. Once again, the light bulb goes on brightly. The fifth solution will be copper chloride. As you can see, the copper chloride is a green crystal-like substance. When we take the copper chloride and we dissolve it in the water and stir, you can see that when copper is dissolved in water, it creates a blue solution. Transition metals, when they dissolve in water, they create a colored solution. It looks like it dissolved, but let's check the conductivity. We put the light bulb in, and once again, the light bulb is lit brightly. 
The sixth solution is sodium hydroxide. You can see that the sodium hydroxide are pretty big flakes. Once I take the sodium hydroxide and dissolve that in water and stir with the scoopula, I will also once again break up the big pieces of flake by chopping them to increase surface area and decrease particle size. Let's take a look to see if the light bulb goes on. Once again, the light bulb is lit bright. The solution is conducting electricity. The seventh substance is potassium chromate. It is a bright yellow granular substance. When I take the potassium chromate and dissolve it in the beaker of water and stir, it makes a yellow solution. Once again, we learned from the copper chloride that transition metals dissolve into colored solutions, in aqueous solutions. While potassium is not a transition metal, the chromium in chromate, CrO4, is a transition metal. It is element number 24 in the D block. We shall take the light bulb once again, and to no surprise, it lights up brightly. The last solution is calcium sulfate. The calcium sulfate is a powdery substance. I will take the powdery substance, dissolve it into the beaker of water, stir it, It's making a cloudy solution. Let's see if the light bulb goes on. Uh-oh, the light bulb goes on, but not too brightly. Let's see if we could figure out why. To recap, calcium carbonate was insoluble in water. It did not really conduct electricity. Potassium nitrate, group one elements, are always soluble in water. So potassium nitrate was soluble, and the light bulb did go on. Ammonium sulfate, ammonium, is always soluble in water. It dissolved, and the light bulb also did go on. Potassium chloride, once again, group one elements are always soluble in water. Potassium is a group one element, and the light bulb did go on. Copper chloride. Chlorides on the left side of table F are soluble in water, except with silver, lead, and mercury. Since copper is not one of those three elements, it is soluble in water, and the light bulb did go on. And we made our blue solution. Sodium hydroxide, once again, sodium, a group one element, soluble, and it dissolves in water. Potassium chromate, chromate is on the right side of table F, that is insoluble, but one of the exceptions is when, a, when chromate is with a group one ion. So it is soluble, the light bulb went on, and it made the colored solution. Finally, with calcium sulfate, while sulfate is on the left side of table F, meaning that it is soluble, it does have five exceptions. The five exceptions are when sulfate is with silver, calcium, strontium, barium, or lead. Since calcium is one of those exceptions, while sulfate is normally soluble, in this case, it is insoluble. And here, you saw the light bulb go on, but dimly. We'll see why in a second. When we look at table F on page two of the chemistry reference table, we notice that there is an asterisk on the bottom. It says, 
compounds having very low solubility in H2O. So while it says soluble with exceptions and insoluble, it just means that it has a very low solubility. That's why we saw the calcium carbonate light up a little bit and the calcium sulfate light up a little bit more. So let's have a little fun. Remember from before, the copper chloride solution and the potassium chromate solution formed colored solutions. The copper chloride being blue and the potassium chromate being yellow. Let's see what happens if we mix them together. If I take the copper chloride solution and pour it into the beaker of the potassium chromate solution, we get a very disgusting looking solution. If you look at it very closely, you can see that there are little particles forming and falling to the bottom of the beaker. These are called precipitates. It's solid formed in a chemical reaction, and they precipitate out, they fall to the bottom of the glassware. Let's see why we get this reaction. We started off with the copper chloride, CuCl2, AQ. We added potassium chromate, K2CrO4, also AQ. And when we mixed them together, we created a double replacement reaction where the anions and the cations switch places. So copper came in with chlorine, but copper as a product is going to be with chromate. Copper still two plus charge, chromate still two negative charge, which means we're left with potassium who came in with chromate is now going to leave with chlorine. So potassium group one is a one plus charge and chlorine in group 17 is still one plus charge. We crisscross, drop, swap, the two and the two reduces to one and one, so we get CRO, CuCrO4 plus one and one, we get KCO. We rewrite our reactants. Before we go any further, we have to balance the equation. I see that there are two potassiums on the right side, but only one on the left. So I'm going to put a two here to balance out the potassiums. When I do that, I also change the number of chlorines. I checked to see over here, I also have two chlorines. So the equation is balanced. One and one on the coppers, two and two on the chlorines, two and two on the potassiums, and one and one on the chromines. So I could fill in the coefficient of one for the missing coefficients. However, the last step, I must use table F to figure out which one of the two products is the solid at the bottom of the beaker. I look at table F, I go to the right side, I can't find copper, I can find chromate. Copper is not on table F, chromate is. I see that chromate's insoluble. Unless chromate is with a group one element, calcium, magnesium, or ammonium. Since copper is not one of those four exceptions, that means copper chromate is insoluble, which means it forms that solid precipitate at the bottom of the beaker. When I look at potassium chloride, I know that potassium group one elements are always soluble in water, so I write an NQ. Here is the beaker from before in which we mix the copper chloride and potassium chromate. As you can see, there is a brown solid precipitate at the bottom of the beaker and a clearish orangish liquid on the top. The brown precipitate on the bottom, as we just found out from the double replacement reaction, is solid copper chromate. On the top, the liquid that is aqueous potassium chloride. We learned that the copper chromate is insoluble, so it forms a precipitate, and the potassium chloride is soluble, so it will be in solution. Thank you very much for watching this lesson on solubility, insolubility, precipitation reactions, 
in double replacement reactions. I hope you have a wonderful day.